We are here in southeast Georgia. I got Walt, Derek, John, and me, and we just finished a hunt, and we've got to do a quick recap with these boys. Yeah, they're, about, they're about to evict us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Derek's got a hard stop, and actually we all do because we yeah. have to be out of here in like an hour or 30 minutes, something like that. Yeah, yeah. all of us. So, Gillers, you guys got to update us. We've been down here in southeast Georgia. The hunting has been tough. It's supposed to be the rut. I didn't see a single deer chasing. I, you did. I had I had one doe being dogged. Yep. I didn't see a deer chasing. Yeah, nothing. And, yeah, me and John, we didn't see a deer chasing. So, last night, these dudes both killed. We got pigs and deer down. And me and John drove. How far is it? How many miles do you think we covered? Oh, my in, in, God. in the dirt. Jeez. Me and John, separate from... To go to where you guys oh, were. Oh, oh, to where back. we yeah. – uh, it so all the way to the doe and back is yeah. two miles. Well, in the car too. Just give me a roundabout. Oh, you mean from the end? From where we drove to meet you guys. Oh, Jesus, dude. You're talking – What, like 10 five. miles? Yeah. yeah. No, it had to be at least 10 or yeah. 12 miles. 10, yeah. 10, 12 miles, one way. Yep. <laughs> on – in Crap roads. Jo- <laughs> in places where there should have been deer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, this is my yeah. point. Yeah. Places where there should have been deer, and we did not see not one single That's deer right. yeah. cross the road. I couldn't believe it. There and back. Yeah. Well, it, so since Wednesday night when I got here, when we drove for two and a half hours at night after dark, yeah. we didn't see a single deer. I have seen two two deer in the daylight moving. It was that was that mm-hmm. Thursday morning, mm-hmm. and then we saw one doe on the way out yep. uh, two nights ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't it's, understand. On, it. on Monday, I put in 20, 25 miles just on the front half of of the WMA. And didn't see one single deer. I didn't bump a deer. Well, while walking, did you bump anything that you could go? No. That was a deer? No. I it, bumped one deer go, uh, coming in. Did and you? And that was it. Yeah. Yesterday. I mean, I. No, it, no, no, no. Last night. The sign was everywhere. Two nights ago. I, yeah. I, I'm just guessing that they're, they have been, because of all the pressure that this piece has gotten, that they have just found some really inane, thick places that are just, they're, they're just holding up. I couldn't agree more. It's yeah. got to be what it is. And the amount of dudes that we saw, yeah. maybe like vehicle-wise, yeah. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, pressure. we were way back in the cover. We have no idea how many trucks. I bet there's a lot of trucks yesterday. Yeah. That came in. Well, while we're getting set up Saturday morning, I had four, or well, while I was getting set up at my location Saturday morning, I had four guys drive up be like, hey, where are you going back there? <laughs> and I, I was there at like, I don't know, 4.30, 5, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I already had four trucks roll And we up. had the one dude walk up on us on yeah, what night was right. that? The first night. Oh, the first night. Thursday right. night or whatever. At 5.30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, prime time. It wasn't quite 5.30, but it was it was like, it was was like five or, or a little after. Yeah. I mean, it was really close. close. Here he comes through the swamp, and I'm like, what? And we were back a mile, mile and a half. Mm-hmm. You said he came from the other and side. And he came from the other side, which we didn't think there was access there. So obviously there's the, not supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> There's not supposed to be access from there. He came from the other side. Yeah. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. He yeah. came from the opposite way that we thought the only access yeah. was. Um, so either there is a secret honey hole that he <laughs> knows about, access point that is good on him, or, you know, maybe there was something else happening there. Yeah. But I guess it doesn't really matter. The point is he came through. I'm getting jacked. I hear the footsteps coming through the swamp. I'm like, I'm like John, dear, dear, dear. He goes, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, and then I see it's a dude, and I give him the whistle. I give him a courtesy whistle, you know, and I'm going to give him a wave and, you know, go the other way kind of deal. And he looks up at me, keeps coming, and then I, hey, hey. And he says, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you like like all grumbly, like Papa Smurf. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Or like, what was the angry Smurf? He was like mm-hmm. that. He was like the angry Smurf. Yeah. And he walks up under the tree, and I said, hey, I got a couple of buddies up that way. Um, they're hunting the opposite way because I had my bikes we had two e-bikes and I had them on the ground just not locked up <laughs> I didn't want him to go up that way and see mm-hmm. the bikes and like take them so I said hey I got two buddies that way and he's like well I guess they're gonna have company <laughs> I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> uh so anyway so I go we he goes up there and he ends up being like 150 yards away and we can hear him rattling. Every and, five minutes. He's every heard. five <laughs> minutes. Like, I'm all for rattling, like, especially now. It's in the rut. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a great idea. He rattled every five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-mm. I think if I could go back and do it all over again, I wouldn't have scouted any of the places that I scouted. I would have completely – like if I had understood just how pressured that area was getting, yeah. I think I would have just looked at a map and said, where is the thickest, harshest transition line I can possibly find? I'll have like one shooting lane. Because when I went scouting that second to last day, 
I went down this this swamp bottom, and it was just just palmettos, they you know, head high. It was just one of those classic thickets, and there was water standing water back in there. And as I'm walking down the edge, the fire break, you had to kind of like duck your head to get down, and you're walking, and there's scrape, 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 and they're all freshly peed in. And this is like five o'clock in the afternoon. That's money. And then there was a trail that cut back into that swamp, and it was beat down. I mean, just mud. I don't even think I sent you that showed you that photo. It's just churned up from mm. where they're walking. Is that back the one you forth. posted on uh, Instagram? Yeah, yeah, you posted yeah. one on Instagram. Okay. I saw. Yeah, that was it. And I and and I realized here it is five o'clock in the afternoon. I, we're not seeing anything at five o'clock. And suddenly you've got you know he's he's just come out and worked all his scrapes going back to his bedding area. And there were trees that were all raked and and rubbed, but. Couple that with what happened the very last night, where I'm way back in the thick stuff, and there are deer beds and deer moving. So I think do it all over again. I would probably would have hit really thick cover. Like I, really. I guess it's hard to say. I mean, we we definitely found fresh sign. Yep. I mean, we, everywhere, everywhere we hunted. So we hunted what one, two, three, three spots yep. in three days, and uh, every single place had fresh rubs, freshly peed in mm-hmm. scrapes, mm-hmm. which is. I mean, we got some of it on video. The videos will be coming out here in the next couple of weeks on the on the YouTube cha- tethered YouTube channel that you're watching right now. But um, I mean, talking like fresh pee in the scrape yeah. that was there less than 12 hours, yeah. and I'm like, holy crap, we got to hunt here. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think they were moving until dark. I mean, mm-hmm. the the two afternoons that we hunted, three afternoons, we saw deer just at night. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, right at night, I yeah. mean, 10 minutes before legal shooting light was over. Last night, we had five come through right at dark. I mean, yeah. well, 85 degree temps don't really help that yeah. either. I yeah, mean, but yesterday was cooler. I it mean, was. the high was, was like 72 windy. or 73. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, I saw deer that morning. I did too. I saw two. Yeah, saw you two saw deer. two. We saw four, and you saw four. So I mean, the cool. I think the moment that 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 cool cool uh, cold front, yeah, it came through. I think that that definitely helped get them up and moving. But it's just not what I was expecting. It's not. This it's was not. This was typical for the. I mean, you don't live far from here. You you live here, and I live here. So this is typically how my hunts go mm-hmm. in in this part of Georgia. But I was expecting better. Here, yeah. just because of the way you know the the that circumstances around, <laughs> not necessarily that a little bit of that, but some of it was once you started hyping it, I started looking into it, and I was like, oh yeah, this actually should be freaking awesome. Yeah, so I don't know. I think I think give it a few few more years where it kind of dies down and like everybody hits the other WMAs surrounding it. I think it will. I think it's just the first year everybody's trying to feel it out and get it and see what's up. And, and it's also close proximity. It is quality Florida. hunting. Per, re, relative to what's in northeast Florida, like the Jacksonville area. So I think you're always going to have yeah. a lot of Jacksonville dudes that in 40 minutes after work can fly up and do an afternoon hunt. Because that was the part that really blew my mind is oh, Wednesday and yeah. Thursdays, which typically are dead periods. Still busy. Oh, my gosh, dude. And it was were, yeah, unreal, which which made it difficult to scout in some aspects because you're thinking Thursday afternoon you should be able to go out in the woods and scout, and there's already trucks parked in their spots and dudes waiting to go in. It was cool, though. It was a fun hunt. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful place. Yeah, just not what I was expecting. Yeah. That's, that's the point. Um, I didn't get one down, but you two guys, and, and I still haven't heard the story because it was so late. You said it's yeah. an awesome story, so. Yeah, so – <laughs> I'm, I'm hunting this spot Saturday evening that I had a doe and a button buck come like right by and they went back into this little pine thicket and I'm sitting there I haven't seen Jack the wind is just swirling in fact there were several times I told Derek I was like man I just get down I'm not gonna see anything and but you're there it's the last yeah. hunt if it was like a Thursday of this hunt I probably would have got down and scouted but I'm sticking it out, and off in the distance, I see this doe just come screaming across these 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 fire lanes that have been cut. And she comes screaming back by, and here comes a, 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 a deer behind him. I'm freaking out. So I grunt really aggressively because they're about 150 yards out. And something looks down the fire break, and I'm trying to scramble it from my binoculars out of the bag. Something looks down the fire break, puts his nose down, and goes mm. off. And I'm thinking, okay, that's the end of it because they're also due de- I mean, dead downwind of me th- this entire time. And about 10 minutes later, out pops the button buck I'd seen before, 40 yards in front of me, and starts feeding on, on water uh, water, uh, ac- water oak acorns. And out pops the nanny that I saw before. Comes right out behind her. I'm thinking, okay, cool. If they work off this direction, I'll get a shot. She comes right downwind of me, stands perfectly broadside at 20 yards. And I shot her. She runs straight down that fire break like a scalded dog. 
and at last, at the very end of it, you see her jut off into the into the pines, and I kind of feel like it was windy, but I was pretty confident I had heard like a thrashing in the bush. Fast forward like 15 minutes, here comes Derek down the trail, and I'm teaching him because he's never done blood tracking yeah. before. And it, the blood was intermittent, but it, when it was there, it was, it there. was really, yeah. really good, and it yeah. was all bright red, uh, red, and you know, it was bubbly. It was definitely, you know, long shot. So we're doing our thing, we're doing our thing, and at one point she starts, you know, dropping off both sides, which is just a great sign. But then all of a sudden it does like this U turn, and I'm yeah, it I, starts backtracking. Yeah, like, and we what? can't find the blood. And Derek's like, well. Derek makes an awesome observation. This one stick, the blood was on this side, so you knew what direction she was going. Mm-hmm. So we were able to make this loop, and I'm starting to make bigger and bigger loops after last mm-hmm. blood, like you do when you're trying to figure out what direction yeah, you they start went. grid searching. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah. And what has happened is this oak tree has fallen down <laughs> and revealed its root base, and then this other oak tree has fallen on top of it, but continued to grow. So you've got this ridiculous yeah. stem count right here. I mean, it's just amazing. It's like a little bunker. And all of a sudden you hear, whoosh, 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 like something thrashing in the bushes. On one side of the tree, yeah. Yeah, and I went, Derek, do you hear that? He goes, yeah. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. You hear it again. And I was like, dude, it sounds like a deer. <laughs> Is that her deer in the bush trying to get away? And at this point I'm trying to reconcile because I know I double lunged her. The blood said I double lunged her. You don't run 100 and plus yards if it's a spine shot. So why is she struggling to get out of the bush? It just doesn't make any sense. Get down on her hands and knees and we see white. And we're like, holy crap, she's down in this little bunker, and she's moving. And I'm like, what in the world? So it sounds so, like she's getting out of yeah, the other so, side. So, so I double back. I was like, well, I'm going to double back around on the other side of the tree because we couldn't see. We could barely make out something. Something was moving. And uh, I was like, well, But you me, could see white. Yeah. Like yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, like, a, like a patch back. this big. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, literally, literally that big. I was like, let, let me double back. So I double backed around. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you're deer. And then I was like, what's moving? Armadillo. <laughs> ah. the, the deer had landed on the armadillo's hole, and the armadillo's trying no to get way. out of the yeah. hole. That's the only reason we – I mean, we probably would have grid searched and eventually, you know, search. But we found that deer because that armadillo is trying to get out of his front door, and there's a dead deer laying on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it was good. Un- Real dude, because I was panicking. I'm like, dude, this deer's still suffering. I don't have anything to like dispatch this yeah. animal with. You know, I'm gonna have and to get. And you can see the animal shake. Oh yeah, which is weird. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's and it's thick. Like I would have to like work my way to get back there. So I'm gonna get kicked in the face, and yeah, I'm, I'm not about on, that. And you have to get on your belly. Yeah, it was there. unreal, dude. It was unreal. But that was the thrashing that I heard when she went down. She was forcing her way back into that bedded area. It was all bedded down. It was all matted down. That's where they went and bedded the morning before, I'm convinced, and that's where they came out of, and I think that that little button buck was just frisky, and they started playing with each other, and that's what the, the motion that I saw, because as they come out of the right of that bedding, that's the lane that I was looking down. It makes sense. It was unreal. Never had that happen before. An armadillo that helped you track. Blood track an armadillo. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that has to be the podcast. Blood right? track the blood track armadillo. Blood armadillo. right there. It was... It was all. It was yeah, I couldn't believe it. We fist pumped and like wooed and every, I mean, it was just like, like, what are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> that? No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't realize this until afterwards, but this was your first bow kill. It was first to everything for me. I, I get, when I was walking back by myself, I was like, I was talking to myself like, this is like the first bow kill, my first tree stand kill, my first public land slash WMA kill. I was like, what like what other first? Is this pig first pig first pig kill. Yeah. So. First was, tree stand kill. So you never hunted out of a tree stand. Well, oh, no, I have hunted out of a tree. I've been hunting out of a tree stand for the past two years. Yeah. Okay. Um, but previous how like brief background. I grew up with my dad. We on private land box blind hunting. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just still hunting on the box blind. I never had any, and that was a hope and a prayer coming out. I never had any like experience of like okay, like break down the deer, break down where, mm-hmm. where it goes. That's what Walter's been. Yeah, te- figure te- out the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, Walter's been teaching me for the past three years, four years. So it's been yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun yeah. way to hunt. It's, it's man, I love it. It's I'm challenging. Like, it is challenging. I love it, especially when you guys get one down where y'all got one down because y'all were back there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you hear people say, you hear, you hear, you hear public <laughs> land hunters, and I'm probably guilty of this too. So I don't want to act like I'm not, but you hear public land hunters say. Man, that thing was five miles from the truck. I had to hoof it through three swamps, three mountains. These guys were legit <laughs> over miles. two miles from the nearest access point. On sandy roads. Yeah. It, it yeah. was not yeah. fun. No. no. And if it wasn't for you and your bike, bikes. Dude, we would have died. E-bikes. There's They're no... expensive, but you don't. Christmas. So <laughs> I, we'll have to sh- thing out. I'll show some. I'll see if I can cut some pictures in here. If not, check out the videos of the hunt because we'll have that in there. Yeah. But Walt was using like – 
He was using my wife's cruiser bike. <laughs> <laughs> like my wife has a cruiser, like a granny style, like yeah. apple basket on the front. Bring, bring, bring. Kind of cruiser e bike. But it worked. It did. It was, Saved our butts. Dude, it, it took us almost an hour to walk the distance that we did to get to my dough. When you called me that uh, Thursday morning, you got here. We were where we where I shot my dough. It took us almost an hour to get back to the truck. Yeah. It took us a solid forty two minutes. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's it was it and was, we were huffing it and we, we were, were huffing we were, it. It was yeah. two miles, you yeah. know, like GPS point to GPS point, yep. two miles, and yeah, I mean, it was back there. They they freaking earned it. Last yeah. night would have been a long, long night without an e-bike. Oh, oh e- yeah, we would not be doing. This. Honestly, <laughs> if I hadn't had e-bikes, I probably wouldn't have shot that dough, frankly, because. As far as that was, I would have wanted to have taken my, like, Western pack and quartered that dough that out. That would have been the only yeah. way. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Well, if, if me and you were doing it, we would have yeah. quartered out, put on put on my XO, and we would have. Yeah, definitely. That, that's the, the only way to do it. Yeah. If you were that far I away. I mean, no meat bags, just bloody. Just yep, throw just it throw it in there. there. I wish we'd have gotten it. some video of it last night. We didn't, but um, but we, that that's the story. So I took my Baku bike and, uh, and pulled in a jet sled, mm-hmm. and we loaded up the dough and the two pigs and – yanked them out of there with the on a jet sled and a baku bike i mean yeah. and and the battery was dead so he didn't make it yeah. the whole way back but i started with like 40 percent battery i think and then it didn't it didn't make it with a giant load yeah. but still <laughs> e-bikes man you guys should get e-bikes if you hunt somewhere where they're legal and save up your money man yeah. don't buy a brand new 1500 hundred dollar bow this year and get an e-bike because oh, yeah. they right. are money yeah when, when you can use them they are money Ten minutes to get back there. Yeah, yeah. Ten minutes and, compared and to it, an hour. I think if you think about like, and it's what everybody has a, something they try and address every year. This year for me, everything was being efficient with my like my filming setup. Does everything is it compatible? Are the bases compatible? Can I put it on my clip? All that stuff. When I think about e bikes, I think about just how more efficient you become as a hunter because I have to fight sweat. I sweat hard. Yeah. When you when I took that bike back in there the morning of, I'm in my my thinnest of layers. I'm completely dry. I climb the tree. My shirt's completely dry. I'm able to put my sweater on immediately. Like the whole component, especially if you live in the deep south, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, low country. I genuinely believe it alters and improves how efficient you become mm-hmm. in every in every other component of what you're doing. Completely I mean, it's unreal. Agree. It's completely unreal. Agree. But I I, w- I want to throw it to him real quick. He picked out that spot. Nice. I told I told him we we scouted that spot. He liked it on a map. We scouted it, and I said, "No, no. Why don't you come hunt the far side of this island that I'm hunting?" And so he went all the way down there, surveyed with it. Him. Yeah, with me, surveyed it, and went. This isn't for me. It, it, Trusted his instinct. It everything about it. My whole like literally, my whole body was like, "Don't do this. Like, don't don't do not set up here." And Why? Be, I don't know. I don't. It's just. It was like a gut feeling. I. I can't really. That's something was I really. There sign there. Uh, little sign. There, uh, oaks were dropping. There was. There was a little bit of. Deer oaks tracks. were dropping everywhere. Yeah. yeah I mean. Yeah. It, I mean. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was. It was like this doesn't seem right. And plus, the, the biggest factor was the wind. The wind was just swirling, and I hit it, and like the wind would, would go right back over to Walter, and I was like, I can't. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think I can like actually do that. I know you said it, it wouldn't have meant anything. Yeah. I think it would have. I'm just, it just didn't feel right. So I yeah. walked all the way back and um, picked out it, or you picked out that pine tree. You're like, mm-hmm. Derek, you could probably sit up in that pine tree. I was like, yeah, that's a really good spot for that. You know? So I was walking back and I was like, okay, Derek, I like literally having a conversation with myself. I don't know if I was going crazy. I was like, <laughs> do you want to set up and hunt for deer and probably not see anything all day? Or do you want to set up for hog and probably see something come through and take, and take your odds? I was like, well, obviously the hog. <laughs> I was like, you know, like if I'm if I want to see something, I want to see some hogs come through. So that's what I did. Hogs are up, fun too, man. Posted up on I that. I like hog hunting. And uh, I was I was telling uh, John John right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was telling John and Walter. I was like, I was so loud going up that tree. I, I, did, <laughs> I did not care. I it just. I, I was so checked out. That's what happens when you have tree stands. Yeah. You're just big and heavy, and you're banging. It's just super, well, super well, loud. Well, yeah. Well, usually. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yeah. But uh, I'm usually not loud. But this time, I was like, whatever. Sound, sound. I, I do not care. I'm like doing everything, getting it up. I'm up. I'm talking. I'm talking to my mom the whole time. I'm talking to my wife the whole time. I'm just not paying attention. Next thing I know, I hear just something moving out of the marsh, and it's like. Like moving, I was like, oh, 
like, Let me get back to you. <laughs> it's on, baby. Yeah, so I see, I see the Sal and the uh, Juvie come out, or her. Yeah, little, Juvie's fine. Juvie, okay. Yeah, whatever. Little pig, little pig, come out brown and you know brown and brown and black. Come out and then there's pretty start, coloring, by the way. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. I like those patchwork. It was kind really of pigs. cool. And they just start feeding on acorns, just, just chewing yeah. up acorns, just chewing them up. So Walter knows this. There, so I didn't have. I had a shot on, but they're moving too quick. The big sow comes behind this huge oak tree, and there's like this tiny little pine. It's about that big around, and it's right in front of my eyes. And I'm standing up. I have the bow in hand, and I just kind of do that number. Where were they? Right in front of you? Oh no, they were off. They were off on my weak side. They were off on your weak side, which would to have my been right. To your right. To my right. So I put I put my uh, my tether. Yep. Your tether, tether. Yep, yeah, yep. my tether over onto my onto my side, and I turn around. And as I do this number, the pine tree moves. Tether, it, you're, you're talking for your safety harness, yeah, right? Safety yeah, safety harness, yeah. Because you were hunting out of a tree stand, yeah, right? You didn't yeah. use a spare no, saddle. No, I didn't. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I uh, so as I move to the right, there's this oak. It's behind an oak tree, but the oak tree does this. Okay. A perfect V. And and I ranged it at like 22, 21 yards as it's on the edge. It's like borderlining on the uh, on the marsh edge. All of a sudden, the uh, the pig comes around the other side and back in this quartering way perfectly in the v and i was like it's meant to be i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> smoke here and it just I, I sent the arrow took my time it went right in the middle of the v shot it. was perfect by Dude. the way oh my god mm-hmm. Cordial, shot was perfect Cordial, i thought i had gut because like the blood was dark yeah and i smelled it and it smelled like there was some stomach matter on yeah there. that's yeah. because she was quartering away pretty hard yeah, yeah. i mean so, you exited it perfect was, it was perfect yeah i mean you had a good yeah. you got lungs so it was uh yeah, that was – oh, my God. I mean, I don't have dreams about that. But it was just <laughs> quarterback right through the V, just dropped right in and just ran off. The craziest thing was there was absolutely no blood. Everybody – all you, Walt, everybody's like, look for blood, look for blood. And I was like, there, there's no blood. <laughs> there, there's literally no blood. So I just started walking the road. I was like, if anything, this, if anything, this hog's going to take the least Well, you least had seen resistance. where she went, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, she yeah, just yeah. took off down. Yeah. She took off to my right and just went around the, went, went around the bend. And I lost her. I couldn't see her. Um, I heard I heard a crash somewhere in Palm Meadows. I was like, okay, so she's in Palm Meadows somewhere. Yeah. Not too far away. So as I'm the same thing with your armadillo. I'm walking up. I'm just walking the road, looking at the uh, Palm Meadows to my left, to my right. And I'm still walking this road about 60 yards down. This thing moves into Palm Meadows and just shoots off into the marsh. I was like, whoa, what was that? And then I look over, and there's the dead sow. I was like, What? <laughs> Are you serious right now? So That's I just, a great feeling. I just drag her out. And then the next thing I know, here comes the, the juvie, just circling her. Just circling her. And obviously, we know the end. Yeah. That was, yeah. Hey, man, don't feel bad about that. I, I know I know it was rough, yeah. but you got to – these things are a freaking nuisance. The yeah. DNRs all over the country are begging hunters to kill them. Kill, yeah. kill, kill. Shoot them all. It was just uh, – it was just – it was hard for me because I yep. like me, – me and John were talking like, – I like to do it the most, like cleanest, ethically, for for as a human possible. And sure. I I I felt so bad. I didn't take my time on on the shot on the juvie. I was super quick about everything. I didn't check mm-hmm. everything. I didn't run through my through my motions like I did on the sow. Yeah. The sow, I took my time, let her come into the V and sent it. But with this, I took my time, spined it, and it was just. Yep. Yep. So then I was like, okay, cool. I come back, shot it, <laughs> shot it in the head. <laughs> And it's still like not even doing anything. I was like, "What is going on?" And then obviously I like got the knife out and just ended it. It happens. I had it to does. do. I was telling John, but, but just to hear it though, like just as I'm like, "Oh, yeah. it was just it was it was different." I had um, the exact same scenario happen to me on Fort Stewart. I shot a pig about the same exact size as you. After I had shot the sow mm-hmm. and I shot the smaller one, and I did exactly the same thing. I spined it. And it couldn't use its back legs. Yeah, that's exactly. And it, and it was, uh, it was like pulling itself around yep, yep. with its front legs, and it was making a lot of racket. And I did the exact what you did. I got down and I had to cut its throat. That thing charged me. It bit my boot. Like it was a serious. Mm-hmm. Like it wanted to live, and yeah. I felt terrible. Yeah, but it is know, what it is. Th- it happens. You know, yeah. it's a. It's not like hunting is this pretty thing no. where people where no. critters just die. No, and, and I mean. Here, that pig is going to die. It's going to get eaten by an exactly. alligator. I mean, it's going to yep. have a terrible death no matter right. what way it goes. Right. So, yep. Definitely not saying, you know, don't worry about how you kill things. We yeah. should strive yes. for the most ethical shots possible. But yeah, it was, don't beat yourself up. Yeah, yeah. the, the it, life, it lesson, life lesson for yeah. that is always run through your motions. That yeah. one, I just like, and I, I didn't even like check. I didn't, I didn't run through my mental 
capacity of, of shooting. What's your mental? What's your what's your checklist that you? My go che- I, it's, it's a few. So first is uh, uh, is is form and position on on my head, and then the do this, you what do you have a do you have a script that you yes, go through in your head? Yes. So uh, so form, then I run through my pin placement to make sure it's good. Gimbal. And then fire. You mean the level? Level. Sorry, level. Yeah, yeah, level yeah. and not gamble. Level and then just don't, because I have I, I use the trigger. You yep. use the thumb release. Yep. Yep. Don't don't pull the trigger. Just use your use your back arm. Yep. Um, and that's my motion. Nice. Sometimes it lasts five seconds. Sometimes mm-hmm. it lasts seven seconds. Sometimes it, there's. <laughs> 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 I like it. But uh, there, as far as time goes, there's really no time for me. It's just whatever feels right. Pull, 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 pull. Boom. Yeah. I, it, there were a lot of life lessons out of that evening for Derek, and and that's why I told him it was like it's a learning experience. These things are going to happen. You learn not to rush the shot if you're not comfortable with it. You don't take the shot. He also learned the effects of adrenaline because we're we're walking back and he's like, "I'm never going to sleep tonight, man. I'm never going to sleep." Tonight. I was like, "Yeah, it'll yeah. it'll crash a little yeah, bit." I we can... get in the car and he goes, <laughs> he goes, "Oh my god, that bed sounds amazing." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a late night. It I was. Mean, it was that was a lot of work. You guys put in work. I mean, I had the easy part. All I had to do was drive out there and drive a bike. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't have to do much work. You guys still had to clean it and, yeah. and deal with all yeah, that I had to take 100 yards back to the road. That was, man, that, that sounded really yeah, nice. Yeah, you looked, when we passed you on the bike going in there, you looked a little spent. I'm yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I had, <laughs> what, that's 60 pounds? You were like, pounds on my you're like hey, Greg. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, you look, when I get you Walter knows tired. when I get tired, I like mumble. I, I do not enunciate yeah. or anything. You must have been I'm, tired. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing about hunting in the southeast, man. It's hot. It's the rut, and I'm 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 the biggest complainer there is when mm-hmm. it comes to heat and bugs. And man, it was hot. It was buggy. We had to run the thermocell every, and I still got chewed up. Yeah. Um, no seams. Mosquitoes oddly weren't that bad for no. me, but the no seams were just no, killing me. Yeah, sand gnats, whatever you want to call them. Um, that's that's hunting in the south. It is. And it the is. other thing that I like to whine about that is um, very true here, and kind of what to your point earlier is. There's nothing to narrow down the deer yes. movement. That that's one of the things about hunting in the Midwest that makes it much easier is you you can you, know, you can funnel the deer's movement based on ag and terrain features and stuff. Yep. Like, you just don't have any of that here. It's just I think I made the comment the other day like you find this beautiful oak flat that's dropping acorns and you're like oh my gosh well look a hundred yards over there there's another one just like it. Yep. It's like which one is it? You just you just have to cover so much ground to. Be in the deer, and and I think that I think that's where cell cameras might change this area. I, I I think we talked about this. If you had a fleet of cell cameras, I think they they alternate between their bedding areas so frequently, and there's so many of them. I think having that like live intel, I don't know that it really gives you an advantage like a lot of the cell cell cam haters would like to think. You know, you get a photo, you go and kill the deer, but I definitely think it would help you like isolate where their patterns and eliminate are ground, right? Because mm-hmm. that's that's the difficult that's the difficult thing in the southeast, the, the like the coastal, especially like the coastal southeast. It's it's all the same. I, t- I talked to John Eberhart, and he was like, "I'd find the highest stem count I can." I'm like, "Okay, that's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's all high stem count. Like, yeah. what are you gonna do?" And he he's like, "You know, you need to find those subtleties and and try and and see if you can and find a pattern." But it's just different, man. It's just it different is. down here. They are they are where you find them. You yeah, know, people say that about elk when you're out out west yeah. hunting elk and you're trying to figure out. Because in some ways it's it's the same idea there because it's just mountain after mountain after mountain after ridge after ridge after ridge yep. and it's like okay where are well, then they say well the elk are where you find them mm-hmm. and yep. it's kind of like that it here is. in the southeast is where everything is just homogenous terrain it's just oak flat after yeah. oak flat after swamp after oak flat after swamp and it's how do you narrow it down well I I haven't figured it out yeah. I've been in Georgia since twenty. See, the Army moved us here in 2016. I think my first my first hunting season in Georgia might have been 2016. And I haven't been all that successful here, to be honest. I mean, sure, if, I, if my goal was to shoot a doe or a young buck, mm-hmm. sure. But finding and killing mature deer in Georgia, I have not done that well at it. And granted, I haven't hunted them that hard in the beginning because of work and everything, but... It's tough here. Yeah, it, it is, is it tough is. hunting. It I is. I would put southeast coastal Georgia 
against any other place in the country. Come on down, see if see if you can do it. <laughs> it, it well, you, it and, can be done. And you know what's funny is invite people who are big buck killers in the in the Midwest and other places if they want to come down. None of them will take the offer. Yeah. None of them. And, and granted, some of that's to do with the fact that they're not going to take time away from their big buck hunting. Yeah. But you know, in Florida, you got a January rut. You know, your seasons and everywhere else in the Midwest is gone. And I invite a lot of people. I've only had one person be like, "Huh, I might take that up." You know, but it's it's just it's a different animal. It's man. just yeah. hard hunting. Yeah. It is. And I'm not even coming at it from a place of like I'm better than other people Shoot, because no. I hunt this harder. Tra- I want to move. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> like I'm I'm trying to move to Tennessee yeah. and get out of here because it's just hard. Yeah. You know, and and I, and you'll have. You, I'm gonna have Georgia people and South Georgia people get mad at me. Hey, I grew up in Florida, in mm-hmm. Northeast Flo- or Northwest Florida, in Pensacola, and then I've been hunting here for the last five years. I mean, I paid my dues in the South, so I earned the right to say screw this place. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. So it, it, when you've hunted in the Midwest and then you come back here and you're like, wait a minute, so I've got to deal with bi- all manner of biting critter critters. Yes. Uh, I've got. Flying critters, I've got slithering critters, I've got swimming critters that all want to eat me. Yep, yep. And then I've got to deal with these high temperatures. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I'm dealing with very, very little trophy potential as far as rack size. Yep. You're dealing with very small deer. You know, a, a three-year-old deer buck might be, you know, 160 pounds. I mean, yep. they're just not that big of critters. And you're talking about dealing with the terrain and the heat. It's like, screw this. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go somewhere where it's easier. Yeah. You know, where terrain it's, flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. I don't know. I, I'm a hater. I'm a hater on, on the southeast hunting. I am, too. Um, I am. Yeah. I, I just am. It's just not that great. Yep. And I know I'm going to catch flack for it, but I don't really care because it's I've, I've hunted here for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And it sucks compared to other places in the country. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to live here, I mean, obviously you do it. But yeah. It just, oh, yeah. It's just hard. Put yeah, you're, you're not going to not hunt just because the right. hunting's tough here. Yeah. I think I think I could see Derek and I coming back and doing this type of hunt every so often because yeah. it, there's like a, a degree of nostalgia for us having grown up in this area. This is kind of like home. Um, yeah, it feels, it, it feels like I'm at home. Yeah, yeah it does. It doesn't yeah, feel it does. like I'm on a trip. No, it, me. it feels like I'm in Savannah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the same. It, but I think it's also one of those where it's – if you ever were to luck into one of those, and it would be a lot of luck. <laughs> if you ever were to luck into one of those, that would just be like the creme de la creme on your mm-hmm. season. I, I genuinely believe if I were to have shot a 100-inch deer this trip, I could have gone to like Missouri and shot a 150, and I bet you I would be talking more about that 100-inch yeah. deer. I could be wrong. I've never held a 150, but <laughs> I, I just, you know. Well, and there are killers here in Georgia that yeah. know how to get it done. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I was at, on I was on Facebook yesterday and scrolling through my Facebook feed, like, not paying attention. There's like dead buck, dead buck, dead buck. Yeah, <laughs> Cedar Creek, you know, <laughs> so other other WMAs I'm throwing out there. Yeah, <laughs> but it was opening firearm season, so they were they were reaching out and touching. So, yeah, yeah, it's just me. I'm just a terrible hunter. I mean, that's it's obvious that it's the South and it's I, I suck at it. So I need to go somewhere easier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to keep you guys. I know we got to wrap yeah. things up. It's after it's after our our heart. They're gonna be banging stop, on the door. So right. We're gonna have to go. All right, man. We could keep going though. We could. We could. That's, these in person podcasts are the best. They really are. Mm-hmm. It's They're the amazing. best way to do it. Yeah. You guys need to tell us. We didn't do this at the front. Who are you? I'm Derek Barnum. Uh, live, grew up down here, and everything. Live up and coming, Georgia. So. There you go. And then everybody knows Walt. Yeah. Walt from Chasing Tales Outdoor Podcast. Check it out. <laughs> And I'm John Gibbs. I'm the videographer, editor for Tethered Nation. Yep. Along with Jared and Dylan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we got Fleet. I guess that's it. That's it. I guess we have to end it there. It was like a <laughs> really abrupt ending. <laughs> Hard stop. <laughs> that's what happens when you have a crappy host. Oh, no. <laughs> he doesn't do very well. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it. And we'll end it there. And yeah. we'll catch you guys next time. Make sure you're uh, subscribed to Chasing Tales Outdoors. Both the podcast, the Instagram, all that stuff. Walt is building up the uh, the channel. Him and Chase are doing a lot of good video content on their YouTube channel. Uh, if you're listening to this via a podcast, you know, make sure you jump on, subscribe to the Tethered Nation YouTube feed. We're putting out videos every single week. I know Walt's doing the same thing on the Chasing Tales Outdoors feed. Um, John Gibbs Creative on yes, Instagram. Sir. Subscribe to him. He's putting out cool stuff. Do that right now. Heck yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pack up, get out of this hotel room, and yeah. get hit the road because we are already past checkout, and they're going to get mad at us. So catch you guys next time.